Okay, so today we're going to be looking at standard form, and we're going to try and use standard form to represent big numbers. So for example, we could take the number 320,000. How would we use standard form to represent that number? Well, the first thing we do is focus on this part of the number here. So we'll ignore all of these trailing zeros. So if we just focus on the 3 and the 2, we'll write those digits underneath. Now the next thing we have to do is turn that number into a number that's greater than or equal to 1, but less than 10. So if I put a decimal point here, we get 3.2, which is greater than or equal to 1, but it's less than 10. Now the next thing we need to look at is the fact that if I take this 3.2 and multiply it by 10, what will I be left with? Well, 3.2 times 10 is 32. I could times that number by 10 again. What will I be left with then? Well, I'll be left with 32 times 10 is 320. If I times the number by 10 again, 320 times 10 will give me 3,200. We can do it again, and we'll get 32,000. If we times by 10 one more time, we'll be left with our original number, which was 320,000. So in other words, we've really said that 3.2 times 10, times 10, times 10, times 10, times 10. So times 10 five times is exactly the same as our starting number, 320,000. But we also know that we could represent that 10 times 10 times 10 times 10 times 10 using powers of 10. We could say that 3.2 times 10 to the power of 5 is equal to 320,000. So we've expressed 3. Point, sorry, we've expressed 320,000 in standard form. 3.2 times 10 to the power of 5. Okay, let's try another number. Let's choose maybe 4 5 2 one zero six zero zero zero. Okay, so we'll start in the same way. Right, this time we'll take this part of the number, these digits here. So again, we'll ignore the trailing zeros, but what we can't do is ignore this zero here. Okay, this zero is within this first set of digits that we're going to need to recreate that starting number. Okay, so we're going to take the 4, 5, 2, 1, 0, 6. And again, we need to put the decimal place in, the decimal point in, sorry, to give this number as a number that's greater than or equal to 1, but less than 10. So we couldn't put it here. That would give us 452.106. That's clearly not less than 10. Okay, let's try here. That must be right, because 4.52106 is greater than or equal to 1, but it's less than 10. So we've got our starting number. Now, because we want to represent this in standard form, we also need times 10 to the power of something. So now we've got to work out exactly what power of 10 we need. Let's try and get rid of these. Better. Okay, so with 4.52106, if I look at my starting number, I would put my decimal point here. So I need to work out how many times I need to multiply that 4.52106 by 10 by to get back to our starting number, which was 452,106,000. Actually, let's put some commas. So 452,106,000 was our starting number. Okay, so if I take my 4.52106, I'd need to multiply by 10, 1, 
two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight times. In other words, we've really, we can imagine we've moved the decimal place eight times, shifted it ten times along the number. Now really we're moving the digits uh, along the place values, but it's much easier to visualize the decimal place jumping along places. And it needed to jump along from the 4.5 here, eight places, to get back to the end of my original number. Okay, so we've said that we've got 4.52106 times 10 to the power of what? Well, we needed to multiply by 10 eight times. So we've got 4.52106 times 10 to the power of 8. So 4.52106 times 10 to the power of 8 is equal to 452 million 106 thousand okay so this number in standard form is 4.52106 times 10 to the power of 8 okay right you try this number. Can you express this number in standard form? Let's have four, two, six, zero, 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 zero. And this number. One, zero, two, one, zero, 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 zero. Okay, so we've got 4,260,000 and we've got 102,100,000. You have a go at those. 